Now in this video we'll be going over estimation and estimating calculations. Now if you've not very good at working with rounding with significant figures then I strongly recommend that you watch that video first before continuing watching this one. Now estimating calculations is a really important skill to learn. Not only is it a quick way of getting a rough answer it also allows us to check the validity or how accurate the actual answer should be. Now estimating in a non-mathematical terms yes it means basically guessing however in mathematics Estimating is a little bit more educated. Now we tend to use estimating when we don't have a calculator or a measuring instrument such as a ruler or a measuring tape. Now in order to estimate length or distance you need something that you roughly know the length of and then use this as a your measuring tool. So for example if you don't have access to a ruler or measuring tape and you want to look at the length of a table you may count how many of your hand spans that you need to either work out the length or the width or the depth of a particular piece of furniture or for example if you're wanting to see the dimensions of your garden you might take actual steps and you think right okay well my garden is 10 steps north and then five uh, 15 steps west and go from there so you could use alternatives as an idea now there are two types of estimating that you can do. One is what we call underestimating and this is where your estimation is below the actual answer and the other one is overestimating where your estimation is above the actual answer. Now the next thing we move on to as it was briefly discussed is real life estimating. Now these questions are becoming a little more sort of prominent in exams, particularly on foundation papers where they give you a diagram and you need to then work out an estimation of how many or how long or how tall something is. So for example, if you can see in this first picture that we have here, it says guess how many eggs there are in this picture. Now one way of having an educated guess is to split the picture up into a small countable um, scale. So here I've got countable squares that I've done. Now I think you can just about see it. Now when it comes to estimating it should not take you long to do. So for example what I now can do from that one square which let me just highlight what this square is. So here is one square. Now if I count how many eggs I can see so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Well I can see that I could probably fit about 12 squares if I do 12 eggs times 12 boxes then I would say an educated guess would be roughly that there are 144 eggs in that particular picture. Now if a question asks me how tall is this building well I probably know that if a door is about two meters then how many doors would it take to reach the top of this building so that would be two I would say four six eight ten 12 so I'd say roughly around 12 meters tall now obviously estimating is used in other sports as well so for example when a free kick is taken referee doesn't get a measuring tape out although in some some teams might you wish that they would or particularly with some referees so what they do is they take strides so one yard is one stride of their step because obviously roughly one stride is about 90 centimeters which is what one yard is so they are estimating is it accurate who knows we don't have a measuring tape but it's it's a good enough estimate to how long you should be now for those of you who are in forensics or fans of csi this is one clip that was taken from a film so here they found a footprint in a forest and they wanted to see what size it was so one way what they did was they put a banknote because they obviously didn't have any measuring equipment they laid it against the footprint took a photo then they could see right well okay that footprint is and they can work it out accurately how long that actual footprint actually is and then match it up with a shoe size and that could then add to any evidence collected now when it comes to estimating calculations now when estimating mathematical calculations there is a set method that you have to use now this is one of the areas where a lot of students go wrong is the issue with using the correct method for mathematical estimating. Now you may choose your own way and you may think that your answer is a lot more accurate or a lot closer to the actual answer which is all good and well but what you're trying to do is do it mathematically correct and also being able to you to get full marks in an exam. Now the method for when we're doing mathematical estimating is that you need to round every single number to one significant figure. 
and that is one of the most important points so you need to round each number to one sig fig now if you're not too sure about how to round up two numbers to significant figures there is a video which i'll put a link at the end of this video to go through which i'll be honest is probably worth stopping this video watching that one and then returning back to this one now the only exception to rounding to one sig fig is when you have numbers that are being square rooted now if you have a number being square rooted and you want to estimate then what you need to do is you need to round this number up to the nearest square number so if i just put a bubble around this method and i'll explain to you what i mean by if you have a number square rooted so let's say i wanted to estimate the square root of 38.143 now what i need to do now here when we're estimating we tend to use a sort of curly or curved equal sign now what that basically means what mathematically it means it means it's approximately so if you have are estimating a approximately so if you are estimating a particular calculation and you are rounding these numbers up to one sig fig then rather than using the equal sign which is going to be incorrect use this sort of approximator which is like a curved equal sign instead now from this what i then want to do is look at my square numbers so i've got one four 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. Now, this 38.143, the closest square number it is, is going to be 36. So I would estimate that 38.6 is roughly close to the square root of 36, and that is going to be equal to 6. So an estimated answer to 38.1 the square root of a 38.143 the answer is going to be six but for all of the numbers where you don't have a square root you always round up to one sig fig now the best way of that to make sense is for us to go through some examples so let's do just that right so looking at question one let me just uh, create a bit of space between these questions which I should have done prior so looking at this let's have a look at some of these questions then now as i said the main rule when it comes to estimating is rounding to one sig fig so what students would tend to do is they think right okay well 7.2 is close to 7 which is fine and 13.6 is close to 13. now you may be quite good with you multiplying and know what 7 times 13 is but doing it this way would be incorrect and the reason for this is because you've not rounded 13.6 to one decimal place. What I've done instead is I've done it to two decimal places, significant figures, which would still be incorrect. So what I need to do is round to one sig fig. So that's going to be seven times 10. So this answer would roughly be 70. Now, a question might ask you is, have you overestimated or underestimated? Well, this would be a underestimate because I've made this number smaller. And I've made this number smaller. So therefore, this answer here will be a underestimate to the actual answer. Now, if a question asked you for the error, then all you'd need to do is do the actual answer minus the estimated answer so if i was to actually work out the actual answer to this particular question then all i need to do is type it into my calculator if i do 7.2 times 13.6 i get an answer of 97 so the actual answer is 97.92 now you might be thinking to yourself do you know what? 70 is miles away from 96, 97.92. And if I was to do 7, let's just get another colour. If I was to do 7 times 14, or 13 even, you'd get a much closer answer to 90. I'd actually get 98, which is a lot closer to the actual answer. But like I said, in maths, there is a set method that you have to use and you want to make your life easier. The whole point of estimating is making it, you want to be able to answer a question within a couple of seconds, not in a couple of minutes. So you want to make the numbers as simple as possible. Now, moving on to question two. So here we've got 8,405 plus 12.56. So identifying the first, the one significant 
one sig fig. So that's going to be thousands. So this number to the nearest thousand is 8,000. And the first sig fig is one that represents 10. So this number to the nearest 10 is going to be 10. So the estimated answer for this one is going to be 8,010. Now moving on to question three. So question three, I've got 0 0.246 times 0 0.004895. So again, what we'll do is look at the first sig fig, which in this number is two, and that represents 10. So it's going to be 0 0.3, uh, two rather, I should say. And multiplied by the first sig fig in the next number, which is going to be 5,000. So it's going to be 0 0.00. And again, all I then need to do is simply work that out and estimating that answer would give me an answer of 0 0.001. Then moving on to question four. Now this one, we've got quite a lot of numbers, which again, seems to be very, very popular when it comes to exams. So here, if I just create a bit of space, let me just get rid of working out for this. So with this question, we've got, oh, let's get rid of all that as well. So with question four, I've got 57.2 times 110, all divided by 2.146 times 46.9. So rounding these numbers up, this number here, let's use a more distinctive color. So this number here is gonna be 60. This number here is gonna be 100. This number here is going to be 2, and this number here is going to be 50. So looking at the estimated answer, I've got 60 times 100 divided by 2 times 50, which then becomes 60,000. And then, or no, 6,000 rather. I'm a bit crazy with the zeros. And then we've got at the bottom, we're going to have 2 times 5, which is 100. And then I can cancel the zeros, leaving with the final answer of 60. And then looking at question five. Oh. So with question five, I'm going to do the exact same. Now, these questions tend to appear with fractions, tend to appear more on a high GCSE. But again, it's very common for you to get these on any exam paper, to be honest. So I've got 2.4 squared plus 148 all over 0 0.4689. Now, looking at this, you want to make your life easier. So that's going to be 2 squared. This is going to be 100. And this is going to be 0 0.5. So approximately, this is going to be 2 squared, which is 4 plus 100, all divided by 0 0.5. Now, 100 plus 4 is 104. And divided by 0 0.5. Now, to, when you're divided by a half, it's the same as multiplying by 2. So this is going to be 208. So the approximate answer for this is going to be 208. Moving on to question 6. So again, we've got 3.4789 cubed. So this number rounded to one sig fig is to be 3 cubed. And 3 cubed is approximately 27. And then finally, moving on to question seven. So let me just get rid of all of this. Now, when we move on to question seven, I've got the square root of 84.25 plus 15.369 over 27.65. Well, looking at this number as its square root, I will look at the nearest square number. So that's going to be roughly square root of 81. Looking at 15.369 is closer to, that should be a plus, not equals, so that should be 20. And this is going to be over 30. So what I've got is the square root of 81, which is 9, plus 2 thirds, which is therefore going to give me 9 and 2 thirds. And there is my final answer. Now, if you were to give it as 10, that should be absolutely fine as well. Um, so you could say 10, depending on how you're rounding, and you go from there. Now, like I said, there are going to be discrepancies in terms of what answers will be acceptable, what not. But if you stick to that rule of rounding to one sig fig with all numbers, 
doesn't matter how close or how far it's going to be. However, when you've got square roots, you round it up to the nearest square number, you're going to be absolutely fine. Now, also, just be wary of when you're overestimating, when you're underestimating, and that all depends on with each individual number. So, for example, here I've got 15.369 and I've used 20, so I've overestimated that number. Here with the square root, I've got 84.25 and I've instead used 81, so here I have underestimated. So, and it's just a case of tallying up which ones you're overestimating, how many you're underestimating, and then you can make a decision on whether your answer is either an underestimate or an overestimate. Now, we'll put some practice questions in the description below and along with their answers for you to check your understanding of this video.